Joe, do you want to, um, uh, do we officially 7 I get 7.02, we'll open the meeting. Um, uh, Joe, do you want to start with reviewing what was uh, from the last two years that you uh, sent us the spreadsheets on? Did everybody receive the spreadsheets? Yes, right. I could. I'm just going to be on here for a second. Okay, no problem. That's okay. okay. Like I said, uh, I'm the liaison for the finance committee. I know this is your first meeting. Uh, and you've got all guys have a lot of you people have a lot of work to do. I just wanted to introduce myself, uh, let you know that when we you get near the process when you've just about settled everything, then uh, we'll we'll meet with the rest of the uh, liaisons up to the finance committee. Um, you know, whenever that that happens, and we indicated he's going to send me, you know, updates of, along the way. So I'll keep everybody involved. So I'll just let you go do your thing. I just wanted to say hi and uh, Talk to you soon. Right, okay. All right. See Thank you. you. Thanks, Joe. See you, Joe. See you, Joe. <clears throat> Joe. Joe Conway, before you start, uh, Jeff, I you, I know you knew. If, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. You know, it, no question is is unworthy. Um, there's a lot going on that we you know. Obviously, we the uh, the five people, the rest the rest of us have been around for a, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But don't, please, if you have a question, if you if something confuses you. Jump up and ask. That's how you learn. Yeah, um, I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. And uh, Joe's going to start. Joe Conway is going to start off by reviewing um, the last two years that we approved and reviewing what was what's been completed and what's still in the in the fold. And then we'll start on this year's uh, the upcoming year, 2022. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you. We can we can we share? Are you going to share it, Joe? Yeah, I need to be. Um... Frank, you need to make him host. Sorry, how do I do go, that? Go to participants, so open up the participant list and find so his you name. Need to read a chair or can I not do that? I don't, I don't know how to do that. All right, go, I'm in participants now. Yeah, fi find his name and then you'll see a little menu over to the right, more, and you can say make host. I see a camera and a microphone. Yeah, put your... Uh, For Joe. No. Uh, there should be a way there should be there's no if you put your your mouse over the name little blue buttons don't show up oh down the bottom no nothing participants oh wait there's blue buttons oh, only when i go over my name oh yeah um you know what joe if you go to the bottom of the uh, participant list to the three dots Oh no, it's gonna make. Never mind. That's not gonna work either. No, I might. Did they? Did Sherry? Tell me if I'm going to you. Pick them up now. Damn. Frank, did okay. Sherry? Did Sherry email you the host key? Uh, let me take a look. If you just have the, do you see the participants on the right hand screen? Do you see everyone yeah. listed there? At the bottom, doesn't it say? Claim host. Can't Joe just click that? We need the code. Oh. Yeah. It's a locked host. All right. I'm looking right now. Uh, I have a passcode. I have a meeting ID. I don't, it doesn't say host. It doesn't say host password. Yeah. Um, I have a passcode. It's the same 452287. Nothing. Yeah, this, this came up at another one of my town meetings, and I, I think it does have something to do with Sherry making them. I, she's got a, we got to ask her to assign people host or, or something. This came up at another meeting recently, too. Oh, well, you can um, be the official host next time. I don't have a problem with that. I, I just <laughs> wanted you to from her. Joe, if you want to open it up, if you can open it up, I don't know if you'll see something that I don't see. Um, I'm going to email Sherry uh, super quick. You want to you want to talk about potential uh, next dates while I wait and see if I can get her? Sounds like a great idea. Um, all right, I, I asked David to email me back some dates he didn't, so we can we can pick some. Uh, uh, Joe, do you know um, what's our final date for the um, finance committee? Do you have a date for that at least? 
Um, I do not have the official final date from Kevin yet, but I I believe it is going to be the week of March 22nd. All right. We usually do in a couple of weeks anyway. If we do the first, the first one meeting the last week of February, and then uh, then we'll try for the first and second week of March. What days? What days work for people? Um, Tuesdays, Wednesday. Dan, do you still have class on yep. Wednesdays? Uh, nope. Uh, those are discontinued because of this. Uh, okay. This thing. So uh, Wednesdays are open as well. Okay. So. I don't know what works. I, honestly, any night works for me. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Good. Um, uh, Phil, what do you think? Um, I, I have uh, permanent building meetings mostly on Thursday nights. So I'd, uh, two, any other night is good, but generally, uh, but Thursdays. Well, let's try for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And uh, Jeff, Tracy, you got a problem with Tuesdays or Wednesdays? Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are fine for me. Same, same for me. Okay. Let's um. Let's try the first one. Let's try February 23rd, Tuesday, February 23rd. Okay. And how about? It's two weeks from tonight. Is that everyone okay with taking next week off because of vacation? I We usually start the week after anyways. Yeah, um, that's good. February, Seven February 23rd. And then we'll go we'll hit right here, March 2nd, Tuesday, March 2nd. March second, yeah. Fine. Um, if if we can, why don't I know we usually do about four meetings at the most. Let's, let's book five if we can. Okay. We have to use them. How about if we can do? We'll do the next Tuesday as well. How about the ninth? I can't March. do the ninth. I won't be able to do the ninth. I have a, another meeting that night. Sorry. Can I can do, do any Monday other, the eighth. Any other night? Eight. Any other night's good. Monday the eighth sounds. I was Monday. Okay. The 8th. Joe, do you, is there a um, selectman meeting or anything on uh, Monday the eighth? <coughs> uh, no, I believe mine is the ninth, so we're good. It's on a Tuesday. I think so. All right, let's no. go March March eighth, and that's a Monday. Okay. And if it's okay with you guys, we'll bounce back. How about Wednesday, March third? What, March 2nd no. and March 3rd, uh, two in a row? Yeah. yeah. Is that a problem for anybody? And three. Okay. So that's two in a row back to back. Yep. Uh, I'm open. Oh. That, would, that would work for me. Okay. And then and these, are, these are 7 p.m. Yeah. I mean, we can stick at 7 if we want to change it. If anyone needs to change the time, we can. Um, and again, these, I wanted to throw a whole bunch of dates out there. If we have to cancel one along the way, that'll be fine. Just as long as we have something in um, Good. Something planned, and then why don't we try for the tenth as well? That'll be okay. the eighth and the tenth. That gives us five meetings after today, which should should be plenty. We don't if we get if we're cruising along, we we can skip one of the Wednesdays, but yeah, okay, that sounds good. And then, just for the sake of it, can we put in March sixteenth? Tuesday, March 16th, as a final vote date? Mm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. We'll put in March 16th as our final vote date. Let's, um, Joe, Joe, that meeting, the first meeting is usually on a Thursday, right? So we shouldn't have a conflict on the 16th. I don't think so. Yeah. All right. 223. All right. Again, we, these, these are flexible. We're just putting them down there so we have some dates so we can schedule some department heads to come in and, and uh, obviously present to us. Um, Tuesday, February 23rd. Tuesday, March 2nd. Wednesday, March 3rd. Monday, March 8th. And Wednesday, March, uh, Tuesday, March, oh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, March 10th. I got my days mixed up. Did that confuse anybody? And then the final will be Tuesday, March 16th. We'll probably keep the final, the 16th will probably be in concrete. If we have to skip something, miss something, in the, it'll probably be in the middle. Good. Good. All right, Joe, how are you making out? I'm just waiting for Sherry. Can I ask you a question? <clears throat> Can you just read me that list of dates one more time, please? 
Yeah, sure. Um, Tuesday, February 23rd. March okay. 2nd, March 2nd. Yep. March 3rd. Yep. March 8th. Yep. March 10th. Yep. And March 16th. <clears throat> okay. Um, is there anybody that you want to try to get in here sooner than later? So uh, af after this meeting tonight, I'll forward you along um, the request letter I got from the fire department, the police department, and I have one from the school department for you just to take a look at. Uh, I'll say that the police department and the fire department's request list is pretty brief. Um, PD only asking for the cruisers that they didn't get last year and Chief Sullivan's request was two items that he was looking for last year that ended up being had to reduce. We could probably get uh, both of those gentlemen in here in the same meeting and move through them pretty quickly. Um, the school department and probably my department are probably going to be the two longer. Uh, I don't know if you want to get anybody in here to talk to you guys earlier than the next. Uh, I don't, I don't think it matters. Do you want to try? And then we, I want to have Dan in too. Dan from um, the rec department. I don't know. Did he, um, did he have anything special, anything big on his list? I sent it to him. I have not yeah, seen No, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I haven't seen anything back. But I'll ask him. Uh, the other one that will probably have to come in is Todd Bowden from IT. Yeah, IT. Oh, no, mm -hmm. definitely Todd. If, if he can come the same day as the school department. Yeah. Um, That'll be fine. It, it, that'll just be a longer meeting. If not, we can do the two days. Yeah, and then I forgot to mention too, uh, so Catherine, Catherine McDonald from the, the BB Library. Her list um, was basically the carpet that, you know, before the COVID pandemic forced the cut. Um, she's basically looking to just do the same carpet installs in the rooms that we talked about last year. So her her list is pretty modest too. Um, <laughs> If you want to, if you want to ask her if she wants to come, but tell her, as long as there's no issues, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll give her, I'll, I'll give her the option and just say, yeah. you know. I mean, we don't want to waste her time if she's going to just say the same stuff that she said last year. All I right. mean, I, I would assume that we're not going to have a problem with putting that carpet back on the, back on the list. Um, you, you know what? If if it if it becomes a, if we think it's going to be an issue, then maybe we might have to have her back in. Okay. But I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, the other um, person we're gonna that I, I told that we would let her talk is the the person from the Woodville PTO about the Woodville playground. Yeah, um, that's uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, okay. I, I'm as, again, I'm assuming that that was on last year's list that we're going to push that right through anyways. But we might as well hear her, hear her spiel. Um, and not tell her that it's definite without hearing from her. Sure. Um, but any, I mean, whatever. If anyone else thinks that's a problem, we we can address it. Um, I, I can I can always set that one up because she's been emailing the the capital planning email direct Joe, so I can always set that one up. Um, do you want to try and get the fire and and police on for the twenty third? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it out to them when we break uh, tonight and see what they say. Uh, okay. Honestly, I don't anticipate it being super, super long. So they'll, they'll probably be looking forward to getting in and getting out you know, okay. as soon as they can. And then maybe tell the school department and IT that we have March 2nd and March 3rd. If they want to, it would be great if they could do it together so we could bang them both out in one night. Um, yeah. But if they need a different night, then we can do that. I think you're um, you're probably going to want them both together because the school yeah. has some, some IT stuff again that um, Todd will probably have to touch on too. That that's perfect. Are they is um what's what school committee nights are, are those on Tuesdays or are those? I'll um I'll run it by Bob uh, Shiroli um, and find out and get back to you on that. Well, I mean, that's good that we have the third, we're doing the third as well. So if they have to come on a Wednesday, maybe that'll work for them. 
And um, when you find out from from those um, four people, then I'll ask the um, the lady from the Woodville, and maybe have her come in to join us on maybe the eighth. Joe, are we going to be all zooming this year, or is there going to be a time in, that we could all be in, in downtown hall? What do you think? Since since last year, I haven't been part of a meeting that's been in person yet. But um, okay. just asking. It, more than likely, it's going to be all Zoom. Okay. Um, it's not a problem. I just got to learn a little bit more, I guess, on hosting. I'll just give you. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. Sounds like Phil's the uh, resident expert. I know I got to pass the torch. I think you got too much, too many Zoom. Yeah, too much okay. Zoom in my life. Um, did did hey, everyone? Can I make a, can, can I make a comment for IT? Can you just? Uh, I think they're pretty good about giving us a schedule um, of what they're asking for this year and like for the next couple years. I, I feel like if there's going to be a surprise coming into our world halfway through the process, it's usually an IT surprise where, you know, there's a different amount, either less or more. So I, I, Todd's really got things really well organized since he's been in charge. So I assume he'll have it, but I think it'll be helpful when they comes up to not only go into this year, but what they think the next couple of years might hold for him. Sure. I know, um, so Todd had planned to have uh, something a little bit more concrete for you guys tonight, but with the um, vaccination site, there was a whole bunch of work his group, my group, to get that building ready. Um, so he's he's a little bit behind in that regard. But I, I do know, I think one of the things is he's going to come in here with is um, a potential price reduction for something that's already listed on the preliminary sheet. Yep. I'll, I'll ask him to see if he has an out, outlook into the, some of the long range, too. I thought he gave us an, out, an, out, an outlook of uh, years to come last year. Was it last year? Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I thought he gave us one. Okay. And uh, Joe, you you know the playgrounds well, or do we need Bob Dennis in to speak on all the playground asks that are in this year? Do you know enough about the condition of all those, or are we just in terms of our general discussion, or is there anything more? I just noticed there's a lot, like almost every playground's on except Greenwood. Uh, yeah. this year opposed to just a couple so i don't know if something's happened or uh if they're just all in the same bad condition so just interested in that when the time comes yeah i get a, I get a pretty good, uh, general feel for that um when i'm gonna have actually probably dennis join me and then i'll bring Chris pierce our buildings manager too and we'll go we'll walk through in, in detail all of our stuff um some of, the, some of the playground stuff, um, there's, there's two of them that you could you could probably say are immediate. I think the, the rest of it, not to speak for them, but it's more just kind of putting it on the radar of, of something that's coming up, you know, in future years. When I send you, when I send you um, the school department's letter, it kind of explains that, you know, it's, it's the Reader's Digest explanation, but it gives you a little bit better idea of that. Okay, cool. Do we know how much money we have? Steve usually comes uh, at some point and, and like Santa Claus and tells us how much money we have to spend to go Christmas shopping. How What's our budget for capital this year? I do not, I do not know the exact number. I feel like we always say 2 million. It always ends up being probably a little bit more. Uh, but I know he's he's anticipating on, on restored back to the $2 million threshold. Where exactly it lands you know, plus or minus a, a couple dollars here or there. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I'm sure. I asked, I asked Steve the same thing. He said, base it on the two million right now. Two million. Okay. I'm sure as, as time moves on uh, and he joins us and pops in and out, he'll he'll give us a sense as to where where that's okay. going to land. Just on the playground, um, the pr playground matter again. Um, the special letter that we got, we're really not going to take up uh, until a specific meeting. I think we probably have to be careful about, um, you know, taking a, a sort of a, a private um, uh, request and, and, and dealing with it, especially since the letter does uh, point out that, uh, a, that there's a, a competing 
uh, playground, the doll bear for the doll bear for the, uh, you know, for some for some attention. So it, it, I guess the way to the way I, I would see it is that if we invite the woman who wrote the first letter, we probably have to involve her in a group, get her wrapped, you know, wrapped up with a wrapped up with a group rather than a individual hearing. Okay, I mean anyone can come in on the meetings. Um, if somebody went from Dalby wanted to come in as well, I mean it yeah. would be up to us to decide what we what we think is in more dire need. Um, okay, I, 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 yeah, uh, I, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I think we we thought last year that Woodville was definitely top of the list. Um, yeah, it was. Something unless something else happened uh, in the meantime, it, it seems like Woodville is only getting worse. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, I mean, her coming out on behalf of the, you know, PTO and, and those uh, moms and parents, it's just telling us that we just have to make sure it's still on there this year. Yeah, I understand. I, I guess my only point is we, we, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to show favorites if there's a, uh, I guess if there's a uh, competition for these funds, it sounds like that's, that was coming up. I don't know whether that has to be handled. Uh, Joe, did did um, did you put it on for the same price this year? Last year, I think we had it at one ninety. That one four um, one forty is oh, what it's at this year. Yeah, and last year's uh, last year's Woodville was uh, very similar. And again, the only reason it didn't happen was because of COVID, you oh, know, yeah. in the budget. Yeah. So. You know, okay, this, committee, all right. this, this committee was moving forward with it full steam, and then we had a yeah. So, um, it sounds like it's not an issue then. All right. And it was going to be one um, one school each year, or one playground, I should say, each year. Yeah. 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 Mm. The the original ask was one ninety, and then it got whittled down to one forty by the time we approved it. Yeah, that right. that, that number came actually from. Um, Frank, you know Andy, the yep. playground solo from Brian and Sons. So that was that was his number. He's he's supposed to be out to town uh, any one of these days to make sure that that number is what that number is. Okay. Uh, so yeah. it, it could move a little bit one way or the other. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's right in the wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, and I'm pretty sure you did that last year. Whatever that final number was, I don't know. I'm working at 190. I don't know what sheet I'm on, but um. Whatever your final number was last year before we cut it out, I thought you said was pretty whittled down. Uh, I'm going through all the sheets. I'm sure yep. it's yep. these numbers. Okay. Um, Joe, if I mean it's obvious, it's only the first meeting. If if you want to, everyone should have a copy of everything. If you want to yep. just review quickly, does, um, Dan, do you have a? Are you looking at a copy of the spreadsheet? Yeah, I am. It's uh, the first one is a uh, FY uh, 2022, yeah. and it's dated uh, 127 yeah. 2021. And then um, there's a uh, copy of the April 28th 2021. Yeah. And uh, uh, assorted stuff. And then there's a couple others. Yeah, I think I've got everything. Okay, Joe, do you want to quickly go through those? And then if we have a question, we can throw it. We don't want to linger on it too much. We just want to make sure that, well, we just want to see how everything's going that we've been proving for the last couple of years. Is that sure. all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, I'll apologize if I don't have the host key, but. Um... Oh, no, I, well, I think we all can look at them on our own. If you yeah. want to just tell us what sheet you're on. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go chronologically. So I'm gonna go to the one that's labeled FY20. Okay. And that's. And that is dated. I don't. Oh, F FY21, you mean? Uh, no, FY20 capital outlay project status. There, there were three oh. files. There were three files. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So Got we'll it. Twenty, and then uh, we can follow along with him on that one. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, so I'll go. I'll go brief, but feel free to stop me if anything comes up you want to talk about. So, uh, as you can see, all my my notes in the right hand side um, for FY20, all the fleet that was approved by the group 
the committee, I should say, uh, has been completed. Uh, we move down to the next block of funding in engineering. Uh, we had two projects that were going to be scheduled to be constructed last spring. And then the pandemic hit and construction essentially stopped. Uh, so those two projects right now are about to be advertised and bid for construction this spring. Uh, and that's the reason for the delay there. We move down a little bit further into the buildings division. Uh, if you remember, we finished the Doyle uh, boiler project. Rick Stinson was able to pay for it out of his operating budget right before he retired. Um, the town hall generator, I'm just going to highlight a few. The town hall generator, we've been, I feel like we've been talking about the whole time I've been coming to these meetings and <laughs> waiting, waiting. And uh, believe it or not, with the force of everybody being required to work remote. We had no redundancy at town hall to keep anybody's workstation on. If the workstation was to turn off, nobody could work remote. So Tom Walsh, the emergency manager, was able to fund that through uh, FEMA. And nice. that, that is um, actually behind town hall now. They're waiting for some electrical lugs to finish. But um, that should be installed in. So it's nice to see, it's nice to see that one uh, get done. So oh, was that the one that was donated and we just had to pay for the connection? It was going to be donated. We ended up uh, not needing it to be donated because of the way that the federal government unleashed some of the funding that was eligible to us through emergency management. But but capital still paid for the for the 25,000 to set it up. No, so they pay we're going to end up having to pay a small amount of money for the switch gear, which was not included, but um, that $25,000 line is going to return over 50% of that number back to the general fund. Um, we were able to bring that in and get that done, um, you know, and, and show a savings, which was, which was great. Um, the conference room upgrades for town hall were all the tables that were finished. Um, all the work at Five Common was complete. The gutter replacement at the senior center, that was another project that was supposed to get done last spring. And then uh, COVID-19 kind of shut everything down. So that's going to be on our radar for this spring. The same thing with the French drain on the building. Um, all the work at the public safety building that's noted in there has been completed. Um, I do have to talk to Catherine McDonald. I am almost positive that the carpeting that was before that year was finished and the masonry. Uh, I just want to confirm that with her before I put that in, in print. Uh, the rooftop unit, we just wrapped up getting those on. Uh, so those were completed. We replaced a 50 ton unit over the cafeteria. We got the unit inside of the locker room up and working. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, the windows, the tile floors as well. The boiler at the doll bear, uh, another big ticket item from this year. That's complete. Uh, the plumbing at the Woodville is ongoing. Uh, there's a couple more things to do. They've been replacing uh, some of the fixtures in there as they've been breaking. So if they're working, you know, they stay in place and as they break, they've been updated. Um, the Yule windows and the oil tank is obviously all gone. The sprinkler system at the Doyle, I can say uh, this winter was finally finished. Uh, so it was nice to see that project done. Addressable alarm as well. Uh, the Civic Center, if you can remember, we, we put this money forward to do two things. So hopefully to do uh, the balusters on the roof and then to also potentially address some of the window cables inside the gym. Uh, but if you remember, we were unsure about whether or not the floor had asbestos underlayment. So we didn't, we didn't touch it until we knew the floor project was done. We are up just before the snow started. We removed the balusters on the roof and are beginning to install those and still be wrapping up that project soon. Moving right. on the inside. And the doors all new there too, right, Joe? Doors, the doors new, um, and I think we even have we have a little bit of um, money available to potentially refinish the floor in the community room. 
Uh, we're gonna we gotta see how what we come in at you know for the final total. Start peeling some of that rubber roof back and, and putting it back together. Well, I didn't know if that was another reason why you don't have maybe Dan come in just to talk about that, even just as a guy who's there all the time. Yeah, totally. And um, our buildings manager can can update us, you know, to yeah. the minute too. Um, let's see. So the cemetery roadways obviously is uh, finished. Uh, the parking lots town wide, we were able to do half of it. Uh, the other half was again something that was scheduled for the spring early summer of last year and they were just pushed off because of the pandemic. Um, see the police department was able to get their cruisers. The oh, have they been delivered? So those three cruisers have been delivered? Yes, they're in service. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Painted and everything, they're all set? Yeah, so they won't they won't put them in service until the, all the radio work is done, all of the lettering is done, and uh, you know whatever other equipment they need is in place. So, uh, moving further down the list, the school department, as you can see, um, they completed the bus acquisition. The work has been finished. Uh, the one thing that note to note here: the Dolbear dishwasher and the Woodville dishwasher. The Woodville dishwasher was the worst of the two and ended up being more than the $7,500 that was uh, put forth by the committee. So they did not get to the uh, The PA system has been upgraded in food tracking software. Uh, it's something that's ongoing with the food. Uh, the fire department, if you remember, uh, Chief Sullivan had a grant. If we matched the grant, he was able to get um, an air compressor basically for 90% off. Um, IT, I'll have to verify with Todd, but as I said earlier, he's been a little tied up with the vacuum. Um, moving into the enterprises, uh, everything with the exception of the system improvements and sewer has been finished. And everything with the exception of uh, some of the hydrant replacements that we had a six million gallon pump to remove this spring. But the overwhelming majority of this year's capital plan is complete or scheduled to be complete this spring. Okay, that's very good. So uh, bear with me for one second. I just got the host key, so I'll, I'll share it. Hey, Dan. Yes. Are you able to mute your side of your phone? Um, I'm getting a lot of background from your line on my, my end for some reason. Let me see. You on a landline? I'm on a landline. I can call back on a, um, I can call back on a cell phone. Well, do you have a, do you have a speaker phone available on your phone? Cause you can just put speaker no, phone. No, I don't. No, oh. I don't. Are you are you getting uh, uh, hmm, you're getting it like, from my like, landline? Like just like you know, it's hitting your chin, or you know, every time it oh, makes oh. a noise, it's it's bumping uh, it's bumping the speaker off. That's all. Okay. All right. I'll try to keep that to a minimum then. So that may you, just you, be me moving around. Just do your cartwheels after the Zoom call. Oh, well, I just I just poured a glass of wine. That might oh. slow me down. That will slow you down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, there okay. we go. Look at that right. shared screen. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Yay. All right. Does everybody see fiscal 21 capital LA approval in the top left? All right. Yes. So um, this is our condensed list from last year. Um, so just I'll start at the top and work my way through it. Uh, all the prior year leases have obviously been, been paid on the debt schedule uh, accordingly. Uh, Everything in the fleet section has been completed, uh, including the one cruiser that was appropriated. And when you say, Joe, I'm sorry, I want to ask again, when you say it's completed, it's in, in service? With the exception of uh, the dump truck that we ordered because of the lag time in the build and the work trailer we ordered, uh, but they had to build it. So I should have either one of those any day now, honestly. Okay. Uh, but but all, the, all the- you say complete, it's in service. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The, the lead time on those dump trucks is terrible. It's 
the minimum a year. It's crazy. Well, it's the Omaha orange. I even I even asked if, if I bought it white <laughs> and it's, they don't nobody has them sitting on the lot and it's just yeah. you know they don't they don't build it until you order it. It's you know, you'd think you'd have one halfway there, but maybe it's yeah. me. Um, so coming down, obviously you can see any anything that has a slash through it obviously was something that uh, was removed as part of the final vote. But uh, the windows at Five Common Street uh, will be done as soon as the snow melts. Uh, at 11 Lafayette Street, the fire escape doors and the stairs have been completed. Uh, the flooring inside of the senior center has also been completed and the Greenwood Fire Station got a brand new gas fired boiler which um, heats not only the Greenwood Fire Station, but the post school in the back. Um, the faucets and flushometers, that's something my group in the public schools are working through uh, currently to get all that fixed and in place. Uh, something interesting to note, the hot water heater here that we originally had in the plan, um, this is something that I am actually doing out of operating money right now. So uh, Bob had Bob had put that in for fiscal 22 as well. When we get to that, uh, that'll be something that I'm going to recommend to be removed because we should have that in place as soon as the the unit comes. It's on order. They said there's about a three and a half week lead time for that. So uh, it shows up. It's going to go in. It's going to be brand new. Uh, the Yule School, if you remember, this is probably the worst floor we had as far as condition. It was nine by nine friable asbestos tile. Uh, so that was completed over December vacation while the kids were gone so the hygienists could work and do what they had to do. Um, another uh, unique part of this is, if you remember, there was an HVAC compressor for both the Woodville and the Dole Bear School last year. And the committee decided to pick one and then do one uh, the following year. Um, our HVAC folks found out that on top of the Woodville school, where one of the compressors was bad, uh, they actually had two bad compressors. Uh, we actually completed that uh, with some of the funding related to FEMA. So that project has been complete. And then the Dole Bear school the unit for the roof has also been complete through that funding and we're expecting delivery and install the end of March, early April. So we were able to get both of those done. Um, one of the things that I probably should have started with when the COVID-19 pandemic really started, right? Everybody, everybody's focus was on HVAC air quality, HVAC air quality. Um, in relation to public buildings, the building staff at Public Works touched every single air handling and moving appliance in every building that we own. It was monumental. Uh, we didn't do really much of anything other than clean and HVAC work for a good period of time. But because of that, um, typically HVAC, I felt like is always one of those places where we get beat up pretty bad in capital because it's expensive. They take a long time to get the project's going, um, so you'll see, you know, through the process this year, we're in pretty good shape with that. And the HVAC asks have basically dropped off, um, which is nice. So just continuing down uh, the road section, again, the uh, patching program, that's something that we'll have out this spring to, you know, mill out and then fill appropriately. This won't come back. Uh, we rearranged some of the permitting fees. <coughs> probably tell you um, so that when when people impact the street uh, we put the money you know assessed to them right back into it uh, so you won't see that in fact, uh, going forward anymore as long as things go the way they go um, so the note just says the woodville playground that was removed last year um, in the miscellaneous section uh, i'm going to highlight the water bubblers with the auto feed uh, Ann Waite, the business manager in Public Works, actually got a grant for $6,000 to purchase and install, I believe, three, if not four of these. So I know it was uh, the school's goal to get 
at least one in every building, if not two, if they could. Uh, so I know they'll have some funding requests for some additional ones, but this is something uh, last year that we were able to get and get some installed and we got a grant to pay for it. Joe, so you're gonna, there's gonna be an ask for in this year, I assume for a couple more? Yeah, so I think what they wanted to do is get one in every school, but um, I, I'm not gonna speak for Bob, but I believe they wanted to get like at the Greenwood School, one on each floor. Okay. Um, so I think he's got another five or $6,000 in to finish. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, we basically got phase one done for, for zero, right? So really we're, we're funding phase two. Um, the fire department's portable radios. Uh, this is something that we cut in half so the chief could buy half. You'll see that uh, this year, one of his asks is just to fund the second half of this request. Uh, the GIS application development, uh, this is something that we're currently working with the assessor on rolling out right now as we speak. Uh, in the IT section, the wireless access points in the high school. If you remember, we had a long conversation about access points and licenses, and, and Todd did a pretty good job of knocking that number down as far as he could. Uh, that's finished. And I believe the library received uh, their miscellaneous computer hardware but um, I will confirm that with Catherine before we meet next. And just continuing on down into the enterprises, um, the system improvements is just something that we fund every year out of water and sewer. Uh, those are just capital dig and fix upgrades. Uh, we have one utility truck that we ordered. We're just waiting uh, delivery on. That serves both divisions. So that's why it's split in half. Water pays for half of it, sewer pays for half of it. And if you remember, um, our high velocity jet truck was something that was actually up for replacement, but the cabin chassis was in good enough shape where we were able to just rebuild uh, the back pumps and do a little bit of work on the rear end of it and not have to buy a half a million dollar vehicle. So that was completed this winter. And that wraps up the last two years, basically. Um, does anybody wanna see anything or? Anything else I need to go over? Was it too fast? I, I think it was perfect. Yeah, I think we're all, <clears throat> that's pretty clear. Um, I don't know. Three years ago, we wouldn't have got that, that overview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's per perfect. All right. Uh, do you want to quickly just, does everybody want to look at, I'll share the other one. We can look at it. You guys can talk. We're, about it or? Yeah, you wanna share it and you wanna go just highlight the big one. I mean, what is it for 6 million? I mean, you don't have to go through everything. Maybe some some big points that you think are definitely gonna be on it, uh, are definitely gonna be needed to pass. <clears throat> yeah, sure, this is the 2022? Yes, so this is, uh, this is the, the list, the compiled list of this point. Yes, yes, Dan, go to, 2022. Yep. Um, so other, I'll just I'll start with fleet. Um, most of most of the fleet section is actually things from last year um, that have come back with uh, two new two new ads into this. I believe or three. Um, a funny thing, if you remember the microburst that we had in the, <laughs> the month of August where uh, we had all those trees down. Uh, we originally had a crane truck replaced on the schedule to be replaced last year. Yeah. Uh, it was just in slightly better shape than the vehicle we ended up replacing. Um, we were about 10 minutes into that event and it lost. The so um, that was that was a great way to start that that month. But uh, most, of the, most of the stuff in here is um, you know pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one of the, the new ones from Dennis Fazio is the Toro gang mower. What that is, is that's the mower that cuts the common, uh, all your large fields. That thing uh, travels and cuts between 40 and 80 acres of land a week. Uh, just to kind of put that into perspective, I think it's, you see the price next to it and say that sounds expensive for a lawn mower, but that's uh, it's about 14 feet wide and, and basically is the, the workhorse of what he has going on. How old is that machine? Um, I believe that is a 2014. I will give you that. That thing sees tons and tons and tons of time. So it's 
So that's a machine that only gets five to seven years? It runs at least four days a week, if not five. So what happens but is- But it's got a short life. The decks and the arms of the things wear out and it, it gets to the point where, you know, it, it's wasting money like a sieve, you know. These things aren't generally leases, are they? You just buy them outright. Yeah, um, I don't so, know. If leasing. Even even like uh, some of the bigger stuff that we've had that we've least purchased, that's deceiving. Really, really, what that is is you're financing it. Um, sure, five year. Yeah. The only right. thing is, uh, I, I believe they they consider it a lease because you put up collateral against it. So yeah, you know, if you default, they'd come and, and seize that back. Plus. Okay. Okay. Sorry, do you want to explain it again so then Jeff will understand what the um, the five year lease purchase is? That the, the purchase price is actually the two sixty five. Yeah, then, sure. So, just just real quick. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, so with the vehicle that I highlighted, um, the purchase price outright is about two hundred and sixty five thousand um, dollars. Think of it like the way you would buy any one of your own vehicles, though. If you decide to finance it over five years, the price drops to fifty-three thousand, um, give or take. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to kind of spread things out, and you know, you carry a little bit of debt. But uh, I think to absorb the cost of, especially some of these things up front, is is a little tough. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's amazing how much a, a two thousand uh, piece of equipment costs. It's crazy. So so. I, I will highlight this one. This is um, one of our sidewalk tractors. Uh, full, dis, full disclosure, this is a one trick pony. It is treaded with a V plow on it. And if you get two, three feet of wet, heavy snow, this is the only thing that's moving snow off the sidewalk. The snow blowers aren't doing it. You're not doing it with the backhoe. This thing is gonna be the battering ram to get through all the bad stuff. Um, we have a 1989 and we have a 1990. Both of them showed up in our capital plan last year and this year. I show two of them here just because that's the way our schedule goes. Um, I'm very realistic and know that, you know, for something like that, that's a big price for two of them. Uh, I would say from, from our perspective at Public Works, I'd like to try to get one of them this year. Um, I know it in my career, even even if I have a, a very long, successful career, as I hope, I will never replace it because you're literally going to get 30 years out of this thing. Um, they're very good at what they do, but they do what they do, and that's basically all that they do. Do you think we bought this thing new? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you know, these things, too, they're, they're pretty... Uh, even the new ones are pretty miserable, so you can only imagine what one that's thirty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that, that's two ninety six for both, not two ninety six for each. Correct. Oh, correct. Two. You'd cut that in half, and and as we get into it, um, I would probably recommend. I would say I recommend to probably at least purchase that, just because the price is going to be one hundred thirty five, one hundred thirty seven thousand dollars. Can can we start with one maybe on the plan? To go and then put one for next year or oh yeah I'm, I'm like i said i'm i'm just showing two on this because that's how it shows up in our capital um but i'm completely realistic that you unless everybody came back with a zero you're not going to get two um, but that's just basically that, that statement is to state the need uh, the same thing our old front end loader has been welded and pieced together and it's it's still going um at some point in time it, it's going to quit but um we're showing it because it's something that we think that we need to replace probably sooner than later. But you know, being realistic with the times uh, on our priority lists, uh, some of those other trucks below it, you know, have have moved in front of that. Uh, so that's, you know, it's more of just to start the conversation on that and to kind of give yeah. a little, you know, what's coming down the road. And we're not. And I, I I've been through this enough, and I should know this, but like you're showing in 1989. But we're yep. not buying a 1989. You're replacing a 1989. Correct. Yes. Yeah, right. So and same okay. thing with like the 13 Chevy utility and the OT02 Tahoe. That's 
showing us the vehicle that's being replaced with this request, correct? Correct. That is that is what's in place now. Now, um, it you know it, interesting uh, enough too. I guess while we're on it, this 2005 Ford utility van was actually something that we got from the light department. Um, that thing's in pretty rough shape. That would have got replaced last year, but we deferred it. Um, mm -hmm. You know because of everything that's going on. Phil, so that's my favorite question at town meeting. Well, it always comes up at town meeting. It, it came up. At, the lady asked uh, last why town meeting. So it, much, it came up. Why so much for you, truck? Right, right. <laughs> Just the way it's. Well, it, it's a comment that I don't know if it can be written differently when the warrant gets published, so that question can stop coming up. You know, maybe it can. Be, you know what I mean? But but maybe not. Maybe you have to show in a warrant what you're replacing. I don't know what the legalities of that is, but uh, it always comes up. Always, it's so funny. That, that was my thought when I was looking at that. that was, that's what I was saying. It was a two thousand international plow cost two hundred sixty-five thousand. Then, then I figured it out. Yeah, no, yeah. I, you a can new one cost two hundred. <laughs> so, so the annual outlay on that sidewalk plow on the sidewalk plow could actually be, if you five-year lease purchase and you're buying one, that can amount to what thirty thousand dollars a year, basically. Roughly, yes. Yeah. And that's okay. something, that's something that's a that different that, story. We'll get 30 years out of that thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, hopefully, as opposed to the, the, the mower at 85,000, it's it's only going to last five years. Yeah, that mower, uh, that mower is, that puts the polish on Wakefield. So that thing is right. high, 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 high demand. Mm -hmm. But when, I, when Dennis joins me, he can, he'll touch into a little bit more of that. Um, the only other really, Thing to notice here is uh, the police department their only request this year is these three cruisers i love the new chief he's awesome yeah <laughs> so, uh, that's it he understands what the world is looking like now and is you know those are those are the workhorse of the fleet and that's that's what he's got going I, I was looking inside the windows of the pre transport van. I was over in the station this morning and I was looking, I was like, oh, I'm already seeing that on the list tonight. It was a surprise <laughs> to not see it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so inside of the section, uh, I'll just highlight a, a couple of these here. The Doll Bear hot water heater, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm gonna zero this out because we're doing it. Um, in Bob's letter from the school department, you also see that he's looking to potentially pave the parking lot at the Doyle. Um, I'm going to queue that up to when we're paving Broadway and Allen Street when National Grid's finished. Um, so for now, it, it makes sense to defer it. Um, it's it's not in a state that is jeopardizing anybody's safety. That you know is overwhelmingly concerning. That it needs to be done immediately. <laughs> I'll just note this one too here. This split system uh, in the air conditioning, the Greenwood School. I believe that I am gonna remove this one too. Um, I think that our folks in, in house can handle this and uh, take us out of the capital. Uh, it shouldn't be too, it should where be. You gonna get the, where are you gonna fund that from? My operating budget. So I think that this $20,000 is to, to have the HVAC people run the duct work, the, yeah. the electrical, um, you know, point A to point B. Um, the HVAC mechanic that we have worked for uh, McQuay, and worked for Dakin, so he has excellent pricing uh, through them. So okay. we we could pick up a, a couple ton mini split for somewhere between seven hundred and twelve hundred dollars. And they don't they don't seem to think that uh, any of the duct work or the electrical wiring is so involved or. or Disruptive where we couldn't we couldn't handle it. So um, I'm going to confirm that with them. If we can take that on and remove it, though, we're we're just going to do that. Okay. You'll see. Um, this is the library's request. So this was the request from last year. Um, the vendor that they had from last year. You'll see. I'll forward you Catherine's note as well. They honored the price from last year, so they still have this the amount of money to do it. Um, if you remember, she was also trying to figure out why the stairs were starting to 
the treads were starting to get loose and, and shift around on her. So we needed to bring somebody in to actually remove them and maybe do some borings underneath it to see what's going on there. Is that price going to still be, is that still good or is that going to go up for that exploration? No, I, th I think that's going to be fine. We just need somebody with the, I could probably lift the stair treads out of the way, but the weight of those things might be a little bit more, you know, we might need to bring in something a little bit more beefy to get that done, but that should be fun to do that. Uh, let's see, the nursery fencing was something that we, uh, Public Works had on last year. We were just talking about um, the gate there is in, in pretty rough condition and it's right out, you know, prominently facing the neighborhood. So we're looking to just kind of uplift that. Um, a new one for this year's, I'm sure everybody's familiar, space is a commodity and there are some, some deficiencies with my group that uh, we needed to address. So we have a couple of mezzanines that will be more than likely taken out of service. So at the nursery, we're using the garage uh, to store a little bit more than we were anticipating. Uh, in rearranging the building, we found out that the siding, some of the soffits and things like that were starting to rot away in pretty ugly shape. So it's something we wanna patch up and save the building before it becomes a bigger issue. We also have identified, so the senior center, this is, a, this is an interesting ask. Uh, the senior center has multiple boilers in the second floor uh, and they are all starting to get old. Oh, the second floor. Uh, well, what what is the third unfinished floor? I believe so. Um, oh, okay. Not not the, not the basement where the community room is. Not not where their offices are. But there's an actual there's an upper floor. Um, Jeez. So, it's a little of the school. Anyway, um, this price would be to install two boilers there in lead lag. That's something that we've been trying to do in all the buildings that we have where we can. Uh, the Doyle School, the Greenwood School, the Dole Bear School, Town Hall. Uh, they were all set up like that. So this would just be part of that uh, replacement program. You're putting uh, condensing boilers or in, or what are you doing, just conventional? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I know they're probably gas, but um, they're either going to be Lock and Var or HP Smith. I believe they're condensing, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Chris is going to be able to elaborate that on more detail when, when we go through it with the fine tooth with you guys. Yeah, just, you know, with the Environmentally Sustainability com Committee out there, I know they're trying to get word out to all all aspects that whenever it's possible, you know, so just something to keep in the back of our collective minds, I guess, and some of this stuff, but also yeah. know that cost is a, a, you know, payback and all that is a factor, so. Now, the nice the nice thing uh, that, that they would be happy to hear is uh, as far as oil-fed boilers, we don't have any. So uh, generators, yeah, we have a few that will still run on diesel fuel, um, but we don't have anything. We don't have any more underground tanks. I have one more that needs to come out and we're done. So that's something of the past for us. The high school still might have a um, generator that's powered up like that. But, you know, once the MSBA product comes in, that, that'll take care of that. And we won't be really running anything other than natural gas or electric. Nice. Um, all right, so before I move on, does anybody else have any questions on the building section? I know I kind of just picked it, picked a few out, but um, this will all be something that we'll, we'll dive into the details on as we move forward. Uh, if you notice uh, in column D, uh, this T1, T1, T2, uh, you'll see in the school department's letter, they prioritize theirs, uh, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three priority. So I tried to include that on this because I felt like last year we were always going, what tier was that? What priority was this? So this is, you know, laid out right in front of us. So we, we have it as we're taking a look yeah, at it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, the road section here. So uh, really quick, my group is, uh, we've totally overhauled our approach to road work and we've gotten very aggressive with it. We're actually asking the group if they would consider funding a roadway paver for us. Uh, what we want to buy is essentially a sidewalk paver with that extends up to six feet so we can start doing some of our trench work with a machine and 
start taking on more of that ourselves instead of having to subcontract some of the bigger stuff. Um, so that's where that ask comes from. Remember, we spent some time talking about the cremation garden before. Um, this is included in, into it. Um, this is something that whether we fund it this year or we don't, we need to keep it on our radar so we could try to maximize the space that we have down at Forest Glade. Um, this would allow us to you know, put a substantial amount of, of remains in the ground and, and save full burial interments uh, so that we don't run out of space. Uh, I, I think we approved, I think before we had a cut, I think I thought we had approved like a hundred thousand for that last year and yep. then it got cut to, to second round and that never happened. So um, that's just a bit of history for the group. So. Yep. And this, this price is, so last year we approved basically the groundwork. Um, which was $100,000 to lay it out, design it, put everything in place. And, and um, the other $100,000 in funding is actually for crematorium walls. So you can use wall space as part of these. Um, but that's something, you know, as time goes on, um, you know, we'll get more into detail on. Uh, shown in this is the Broadway gate design and construction. This is something that we're not going to do through the Capital Planning Committee. We're going to need to do a warrant article for it. We're probably going to start asking for design work now. Uh, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, the FRA was a little, little 11th hour with trying to get Broadway open this year and told us that we would lose a quiet zone uh, if we were to open it. What that, what that essentially means is that the trains would have to blow their horns through all of the intersections in town. And if we lost our quiet zone, we would be held to a higher standard of safety and the threshold for interventions to make the crossing safe would have been much higher. Um, that has remained closed. We've appealed to Washington. They're waiting for a signature and hoping that we get good news to open that back up. One of the things that we found out though, is that we can re-signal that and do a couple other improvements specifically in the Forest Street, um, Greenwood Street area, Greenwood that uh, can give us enough buffer. So hopefully that never happens again. Uh, again, that, that's shown more of a placeholder just to get it out there and start the conversation on it. Um, the ADA transition plan is interesting. Um, so for our building work and for our road work, to be eligible for certain grants, we need to have a plan in place saying that we've identified the uh, handicap accessibility issues, both in the public right away and in public buildings, and that we've developed a plan to start to address them. This plan would essentially um, give us a roadmap of some of the improvements we need to do, but it will also be the key that could unlock some doors to funding that currently we do not meet. Uh, this is gonna be pretty important moving forward. This will cover going through essentially every building, every door, every window, every egress and access, all the signage, interior, and then it'll also cover all the streets and roads and crosswalks. I don't think it's capital though. It needs to be done, but I'm going to, I'm going to, it's one of these items that doesn't really fall into a capital. I think in the accounting side, it's a funny, it's a FinCom question, but the same thing with the commissioning that's back on the list up above. It, it just, these certain things just don't meet this capital requirement on this list. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hesitant with that one. That's fine. And this is, this is something too. Um, if the group decides not to go through with this, um, I'm probably going to have to bring a warrant article to the town meeting to do it. Uh, just to, like I said, this having this in place unlocks a whole bunch of funding. You know, for oh, yeah. So, no, I get it. Yeah, I know. I, 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 it, it, it opens, they will open a whole bunch of doors. Right. Who, who decides it though, Phil? Is it, is it the, um, is it the finance committee that no. says this mm -hmm. is declares it a, uh, a non-capital item? We've asked them in the past. There was one year it was all that painting, and we met with FinCom. A bunch of them came, and we asked them, and they seemed to have like backed it up that it wasn't. But like ultimately, I think we could. I don't think it's up to us either. I I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. But I would think that ADA stuff would be capital because it's changing the the access to the buildings and. But it's it's 
but it's not specific to a project. That's my, if we were doing uh, like a major access front door entrance to a building and I don't know, I, I, I it's such a fuzzy, it's such a, probably a gray area anyways, but uh, I'm just bringing it up as a question. What, what, what this would basically do is say, uh, you know, pick, pick any building in town. This would say, you know, in, I'm just gonna use the high school because I'm just gonna pick a building. Uh, it would say, you know, entrance, the main entrance, you know, here's some deficiencies, some recommended improvements to bring it up to code. Uh, what this would turn into is basically the roadmap for, you know, future requests or, or different things that we may may have to do. Uh, right. And also, also functions a little bit as an insurance policy, right? So if you ever got, you know, a complaint from the Department of Justice or, or something like that, we could say that, you know, we've recognized our deficiencies and we're, we're trying to fund them and work towards, you know, 100%. We can get, we can get more into it. I could probably feel, I could probably argue it both ways. I could say, I think it, because no, of this, I, capital, yeah. this like, you know, professional design services too. Yeah, I know. I know exactly. Like, so, okay. Um, so here's where we're going to see the bulk of the, the playground stuff. Uh, the only other thing I have in here for my group uh, is a brand new blower. Um, this is actually, believe it or not, I know I don't have it typed in here, the Skag blower in line 66. Mm -hmm. This is replacing a leaf blower that we used that is a 1975. So <laughs> that, thing, that thing is well loved and served us great, but uh, it's running out of places to be able to bubble gum it and band aid it together. That, yeah, that's got, that's gotta be a ride. That's gotta be a ride on, Joe, right? Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so is it running coal? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> she's a beaut. She's heavy too, but they don't make them like that anymore. Yeah. So all these playground um, uh, requests are tier three. Does that mean they get deferred a year? Uh, um, so they're just here for um, placeholders or are they... Yes, you'll see when I say, I'll send the, I'll send the group, I'll send Frank the, the stuff to get out to the group. You'll see that um, they acknowledge in, in their request that they know this is a placeholder. Um, yeah, okay. You know, um, um, I'm not, I won't intervene, but I think that is a good case for the Woodville, obviously from last year. And then yeah. I, I think that one of them on this listed is tier three, I would recommend probably if not prioritizing now, prioritizing next year, just because of the condition that it's in. Sure, okay. But when I'll, I'll hold comment until we have them with us and we can have a group discussion about that. Okay, and I see the point that you, make, you made earlier about the Woodville being a, a tier one. Um, it's really at top of the list. Okay. Okay, uh, just, just some other things really quick. Uh, Joe, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. And after we figure out the meetings of everyone else, the fire and the police, then we'll get the um, the, P, um, the PTA people from Woodville, the representative, she can talk to us and just give her a quick yeah. feel. Yeah, That's when, fine. I, when, I get, when I get, um, I'll find out what Bob and Doug's uh, availability is. Uh, and then maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask that, um, you want me to ask to see if the, the representative from the PTO there wants to be with them as one United Public School message? Um, yeah, I, I can add, do you have that? Do you have her contact as well? Or do you want me to contact her? I can I can ask uh, either the superintendent or um, or facilities director Bob Shirley. I can have them just say, you know, please invite her with us. Okay, I, I think it's just going to support everything they say anyways. I. If they want to do it in conjunction with each other, that will be fine. But okay. okay. Um, just some miscellaneous things. The scoreboard with the cage, I believe, was referenced last year for the inside of the field house. Um, you see the second half of the fire department's radios that were half funded last year. Um, and then the fire alarm control dispatch. This was the, the computer for dispatch that was in place last year. These two things, um, I believe, are Mike's or Chief Sullivan, excuse me, his only requests this year, uh, short list. 
He's looking for the rest of his radios in this uh, unit. Um, the GIS application, if you remember last year, between uh, my group and the assessor's group, we saw that uh, we probably needed three phases of this to get everything up and running. This is just a two uh, fully appropriated, where last year we cut it in half. Uh, and below it, um, Again, space is a, the commodity that we're talking about. So some of the mezzanines that we are losing, which forced the buildings department to kind of retool what they have uh, at the nursery. Uh, I'm also having that problem at the highway garage. So we're looking to see if we could get a couple of C containers to basically create ourselves some storage that we're gonna end up needing. Those will be parked at Nahant Street and basically convert everything that we have on our shelving into the wall. Do, do you guys have one of those in back of the Greenwood? Is that a town container? Is that left over? So I, I wanted to I wanted to answer you on that because I was still in the meeting. But uh, Oh, were you in the meeting the other day? I forgot if you were. Uh, uh, that well. That is actually, so they had to socially distance the schools. That okay. is, they're, they're using that for storage space for desks and, um, you know, some of their, their things. So that's the school departments. They're renting that until... Um, they can return to normal, really. That's the that's where the morning class meets or something. That's like the AM. <laughs> that's like yeah, the right. AM cohort or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to plug in my laptop. Um, in the IT section, um, the projectors and things like that. Uh, I believe Todd Bowden and the school department will uh, have a little bit more on that uh, coming up. I'm just going to guess that a lot of that is probably due to now uh, the transition into the normalcy of remote learning. Uh, Nova time attendance software, that was last year's request as well. I believe we saw the spare projectors last year and the badge readers. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the enterprises at the bottom go, we have our, our typical system improvements asks. Uh, in sewer, I need to replace one large scale pump. And on the water side, I am awaiting one more bid result to come in and I should have an update for that the next time we talk. Okay, the, the, the Nova time, right, we approved that. That was one of the ones that was moved to second round, right? That never got done, so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just so, just for your purposes on the spreadsheet, if you go to line 86, Joe, Yep. Those two totals aren't totaling lines 84 and 80, 84 and 85. If you go to the formula in uh, C86, it's only going to 83. So you want that, you want to change that to 85 and same thing with the e -com. You passed the alertness test. <laughs> Spreadsheet nerd, sorry. All right. <laughs> I won't hold that against you. you know, every dollar counts when we have two million against six. Absolutely. Good catch. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's it in a nutshell. At this point in time. That's a good size nutshell. So what's missing between column C and E? So column C is 6.6, .6, column E is 3.5. How are we missing? Oh, the 2.5 Broadway, that uh, railroad crossing. That's what's that, uh, never mind. That's this. Question. That's missing. Um, yeah. I, I pulled the, the loader out of it up top. Um, those are just a couple of things I knew right off the bat that I was taking, but I wanted to show just for transparency. Well, I don't want to jinx it, but going from three and a half down to two is a lot better than we've had to deal with in the past. Um, yeah, we, we've started at six, I think, right, in previous right. years. Yeah. So, I mean, just to just to put it in perspective, right, if, if you just this column here, right, you're looking at 400, 470,000, you know. You're already down to three million, right? Right. And then uh, don't don't forget too. Uh, so I'll update this for the next time we talk. Um, Seventy five thousand from one of the sidewalk plows, or one hundred fifty thousand. I'm sorry. No, that'll that'll drop even lower. So yeah. um, I'll get a I'll get a, what the price is to lease that through five years. So that'll drop to basically about thirty thirty eight. 
Hey, hey Joe, n- not for nothing. Obviously, it's a machine you're going to get 30 years out of. Can can you do a 10 year lease, or is that not financially possible? I can, I can ask them. I mean, I obviously, it's a machine. If it, it's only getting used five days a year, that's why it has a longer lifespan. But it would cost more to, to run it for 10 years. <coughs> yeah. Well, you probably they probably aren't available to rent for the for the winters because everyone else is renting them. Right, like Joe? I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, typically you wouldn't find this. There's no way. I mean, when it's it's like February uh, 2015, right? O- outside of something that had hydraulic capacity to lift snow, this is really the only thing that was pushing. I mean, they're they're small tanks, is what they are. Um, so. It's it's a it's a real niche for it. I don't think like and maybe one of the rental places could get it for you, but I I don't know if it would be cost effective at that point. I don't think you could get what you're gonna buy at a rental place. No, probably not. So if you were to if you were to break that out, um, depending on what the interest rate is, which they've been decent, uh, it probably. 33,000 over five years, but I'll ask, I'll see if they'll do a 10. Uh, and then it's just, it's just weighing it out, you know, is, is the total cost plus the interest worth yeah. extending it out 10 or is it worth just, you know, trimming it up and, and doing it five, but well, we can weigh we both. Good to know if we're trying to trim 25,000 at the end of this. Yep. I don't you know. That's, that's all. It obviously makes a better financial it's better financially just to buy it outright, but. Yep, totally. All right, um, we got what, the 23rd will be our next meeting two weeks from now. And I, I'm sure you'll have that way down, Joe, already. Um, you wanna let me know who you can schedule for that day, if any, and I can forward it out. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, try to schedule everybody if, if you can. And we'll go from I, there. And we'll, I, we'll yeah. schedule. I think it's probably going to be school. I think school committee's second and fourth Tuesday. So it's probably not going to be the school department on the 23rd. I'm going to see, I'm going to see if I could get the police department, the fire department, maybe the library in. Because I'm pretty sure in one night we can have all be pretty quick. So again, they're asked some modest um when we are done tonight, I'll forward you their request letters so you have them. Um, those don't those don't seem like like too too much of an obstacle there. But uh, I'll let you know as soon as I know. Um, and and Joe, t- honestly, tell her if if she if we're just going for the carpets, I mean we, she doesn't have to you know spend any time with us. She knows we're we're supportive of it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to tell her that we don't want to talk to her either right you know if she wants to talk to us again that's fine yeah i uh, no, I'll, I'll definitely relay that you know uh they understand and you know the committee understands and wants to make sure that you know your modest request from last year is, is honored this year uh, if we can so you know we don't think that there's too much more to explain but if she wants to come in and, and advocate for it they'll certainly entertain you know having a conversation All right. If um, Jeff, you have any questions on on everything, or is how how uh, how that all sink in? Uh, no, no, no major questions. Yeah, just trying to get my feet wet and figure out what we do here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that was uh, definitely thorough and uh, informative. Jeff, if if you have any questions as you think of, um, feel free to just you can email them to me or email them to Frank. And I'll I'll answer whatever I can get you. Okay, I appreciate that. What, what, what's everybody's role, I guess, on, on this committee? I, I just ask lots of questions and, and, make these, <laughs> and make these meetings go longer than they're supposed to. <laughs> I'm just a committee member. Do we have, do we have uh, officers? Uh, you're the chair, uh, Frank. I, I, I'm just the chair. Basically, like, all the chair does is, is make sure everything's organized. So now you have no power whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Jeff, and I just complain about the cost. Yes. <laughs> Jeff, our committee just basically makes recommendations to the finance committee, but they're educated recommendations. 
mm-hmm. because we talk to everybody. And Joe is the most educated out of everyone in the town. So he is at every meeting um, and making sure that we're as informed as we can be. And then the department heads come and give us their direct um, input so that Joe's not you know, misconstruing what they need in any ways, not that he would, but they, they, we, we bring them in there just to make sure that their capital, so they know their capital needs are being mm-hmm. considered um, because they're always going to ask for more. Well, not this year, but it always seems like they want to ask for more than they, that we're going to be able to give them anyways. But basically, Jeff, we're just, we're putting in our input, getting to a certain number. The bo- It's all about the bottom line and it's uh, the $2 million at this point. Hopefully it's not much lower than that. And then um, we vote on it and we go to, well, I go to um, the finance committee for approval, then we go to the town council for approval, and then eventually the town meeting. Yep. Okay. So it makes us feel like we have a little bit of say in what goes on in the town. Ultimately, Joe just tells us what he wants and we say, okay. <laughs> so, so Jeff, my, my role is I'm, I'm the scribe. And uh, basically when the committee has a question, uh, only because the job that I do, I typically try to get the questions so you guys have the answers before you meet again. And then at some point in time in the process, I, I put on my advocate hat and ask for all the things for our group. Okay, makes sense. What's your background, Jeff? Uh, so uh, I, I'm a commercial lender. I work for People's United Bank. I've uh, probably been in that with Peoples in Wells Fargo before that uh, for about 20 years now. And I've been in town for, uh, living here for about eight years now. So I'm just nice. looking to get more involved and, you know, put, put you know, my, my background to use. Nice. It's good to see. I think we have more openings being posted, Frank, right? Is there, like, I feel like this committee was larger when I started or maybe not. It I don't feels, know. yeah, it feels like we're missing at least one other space. Well, welcome, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, David, yeah, David's awesome. missing. Right right right. We've had five for a while. And it's um, five. yeah, yeah te- technically, Jeff's an associate member, but as far as we're all concerned, you know, his input's 100%. And uh, obviously, we don't usually disagree on too much as a committee. So it shouldn't, right. be, um, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. This dog, dog park mulch, I think that was the that was probably the most <laughs> controversial uh, $12,000 we've spent. Yeah. Those are the only meetings that Steve came to that year was to make sure that the dog pocket pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. pickleball. yeah, and pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> All right. If anyone doesn't have, if no one else has any questions for Joe, uh, I just have one quick question about um, about the high school and I guess COVID totally made that um, survey go right. I mean the uh, the survey with the. Um, it was supposed to start in April and end this past December to get a new high school or start that process. Yep, um, I think so. The MSBA process. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the dates were. I'm sure they were impacted by COVID. Um, so the town is at the point now where they're going to be seeking, uh, you know, the first steps in, in bringing somebody in uh, to get the OPM design, the design process or the feasibility study, excuse me, uh, rolling. So you'll see in relatively short order, the, the feasibility period is upon us. Uh, you'll be working- That's like an eight month process though, isn't it that study? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it was supposed to be April through it, December of 20. So they, they've, they've stayed on their original schedule where we're at. They, things haven't been delayed too much on the paperwork side of this MB, MSBA process. So okay. I think we're about where we're at. The only delay was the town meeting vote because it was the, that was delayed. But we, uh, we didn't miss, I don't think we missed a deadline because of that. So um, I only asked because spending money on the, on the high school capital wise, you know, isn't always a, a good idea if it's going to be knocked down. Yeah, there's not much. Yeah, there's not much in there, though, I don't think. No, but right. How yeah, much? I mean, so obviously it has to be safe, right? And the kids that are going to be graduated the next year or two, maybe three, you still want them to have, a, you know, a good experience. But, you know, I, I could see where, you know, throwing tons of money into something that you know that eventually the record ball is coming to. Yeah. 
Okay, any more uh, questions, comments? All right, um, next meeting is, we'll see everyone on um, the 23rd, Tuesday the 23rd. 23rd. 7 p.m. Uh, anyone have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. All right. Second. Second. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll um, we'll talk to you next time. Let us know if you have any. Uh, Great. Thank you.